The kingdom of God is like seeking. Do you remember playing hide and seek when we were kids? You would you would do kind of the same dance every every time the same way. One of the kids would cover their eyes and start counting, usually too fast until somebody yelled, you got to count slower than that. At least that's how it worked in my family. And everybody else would scatter and find the best hiding spot they could and be as quiet and as still as possible so as not to be caught by the seeker. Now, when I was a teenager, we, we kind of played an, a different version of this, and it was usually at, at church lock-ins in the middle of the night. It was called a game called Sardines. And sardines was similar to hide-and-seek. The difference was when you found someone, you hid with them. So really it was instead of one person seeking and everyone else hiding, it was one person hiding and everyone else seeking. And when you found them, you quietly hid with them. And so we would be in the middle of the, the whole church, all over the church building, every light off in the middle of the night, and we always did it in groups, so you had a partner. And so one set of partners would go and would hide somewhere in the church. And everybody would, out, would go out two, two by two searching for the hider. Now there was a point in this game that, that your desire to find them would raise. And the point was when you begin to notice the church getting quieter, and less busy because clearly people have found them. And when you find yourself, you and your partner, the only ones walking around a dark, creepy church in the middle of the night, you want nothing more than to find these people because it gets a little scary. If you've ever been in a church at night, it can be a creepy place. We used to play this game. It was our favorite game every time we did it. And, and you would feel the tension rise as more and more people disappeared from the game. And, and you became more and more alone look, looking for the hiders. Today I want to talk about seeking. And really two ways of, that the kingdom of God is like seeking. And uh, the first one is that God seeks after us. Mike read for us some, some of that. We're going to read it out of a different version um, in, uh, in Luke about the, the shepherd that has a hundred sheep and loses one and goes seeking after that one instead of the 99. God seeks after us. I read a story this week. Tony Campolo tells this story about being on an air, airplane ride. And he said it was just one of those like 30-minute flights, you know, those real quick flights that you feel like are going to be really quick and really easy and no big deal. And he said, but I kind of knew that this might be a problem as I, we were waiting to board because there was this cute little girl in this little polka-dotted dress, and she was bouncing up and down in the terminal before we boarded. And over and over again, she just kept clapping her hands and chanting, I'm going to see my daddy. I'm going to see my daddy. And over and over again, she's bouncing around. I'm going to see my daddy. And he said it was, you know, it was cute for a while. And after about 10 minutes of waiting, he was like, okay, I'm over this. And he couldn't wait until they would finally board. So finally, they, they go to board the plane. And he's like, I get away from this girl until he finds out that he sits down and she's right across the aisle from him. Okay, it's only a 30-minute flight. But the same thing, she's just wiggling and saying over and over again, I'm going to see my daddy. And her mom is with her, and she's trying to kind of quiet her down and all those good things, but you just, she was so excited, you just couldn't quiet her down. Well, this is one of those flights where, you know, you don't get a meal, you don't get any of that stuff because it's too short. But what the flight attendants would bring was cookies and Coca-Cola. And every time the flight attendant would walk past this little girl, she took a cookie and a Coca-Cola. And he said that after a while, he was amazed by how many cookies and how much Coca-Cola this little girl could fit into her body. She just kept taking them and eating them over and over and over again as she chanted, I'm going to see my daddy. Well, finally... As they got closer to where they were going, uh, there was a bit of a thunderstorm. 
and a little bit of turbulence and a little bit of a bouncy ride. And he says it this way. Um, he says, we all know that cookies don't smell bad, and neither does Coca-Cola. So you figure that if you mix cookies and Coca-Cola and a sweet little girl with a fluffy dress and patent leather shoes and pigtails, what comes out should not smell bad. But that was not the case this time. Because of the turbulence and all the cookies and all the coke, it wasn't long before there was an eruption in this plane. And he said it was the worst smelling vomit he had ever smelled in his life. And it was all over the little girl and her beautiful little dress. It was all over her mother who was trying to take care of her. And the worst thing was it came in waves. It wasn't just one and done. It was over and over and over again. Cookies and Coca-Cola were a bit too much for her. Finally, they got to where they were going. Um, the plane touched down. And he says, I couldn't wait to get to the to the aisle to get out of there. But he said, I wanted to hang around because I kind of wanted to see. He said, once I got out, I saw there was a man that was standing there waiting. And I could tell this was probably the daddy that she was going to see. And he, and he said, so I kind of waited around because I wanted to see what was going to happen when this excited little girl came up and found her dad. What happened next, he said, took me by surprise. He said, the little girl came running up to her father. He got down on one knee, swept her into his arms. She was covered with vomit and smelled horrible, but it made no difference to him whatsoever. He had his little girl, and that's all that matters. It says it this way in Luke 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats them. Then Jesus told this parable, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be no more rejoicing. There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. He gives us two images of God seeking after us. The first is a shepherd who has a hundred sheep, and when he loses one, he leaves the 99 to go get it. This is not common sense. This is a cut your losses situation for most people. I've got 100 minus one. I got 99. That's still not bad. But what happens if I leave the 99 and I go get that one? I, who knows what's going to happen to the rest of them? Common sense says cut your losses and move on. And God says the kingdom of, of God is is like a shepherd who leaves them so that he can go and find that one. And not only is excited when he finds that one, but he carries it home, calls his friends, and, and celebrates with them that he's recovered that one. He gives us the image of the woman who lost one coin. Who still has some money, and yet... It, spends all of her time searching her home. It says he puts, puts a light on. It's not like just flipping a switch. It means using some oil and, and lighting a lamp. It, it means using some resources that she has in order to find what she is missing, even though it's really just a small bit and she has some more. She goes after it. And when she finds it, she rejoices at finding her core. God, he says, is a father who celebrates his daughter, no matter how much vomit she's covered in. This is the kind of seeking that Jesus talks about in the kingdom of God. That we have a father who desires us so much that he will come after us, not just looking, but seeking after us. 
to find us. There's a great poem written in, the, in I believe, 1890 called The Hound of Heaven. And it talks about the God who comes after us. You should look it up. It's pretty cool. Second thing he tells us about, or we talk about when we talk about the kingdom, he, first he seeks us, then we learn that we seek God and his kingdom. There's something in us, I think, that is very natural that, that forces us to ask the questions, isn't there more? You know, I mean, we can have all the normal, the good things that we, that we look for in this world. We can have, you know, success and money and a good job and a family and all the things that we want and still have that kind of feeling deep within us that says, isn't there more to life than this? There was an interview with, uh, with Tom Brady, quarterback of the Patriots. I don't know if you noticed they lost yesterday. In case you hadn't heard. But in 2005, he was already a quite accomplished uh, quarterback, right? They'd already won three championships. Now they've won six. But they'd won three championships, and he was uh, being interviewed by Steve Croft on 60 Minutes. And uh, he spoke to him about his success on and off the field, about being satisfied in life, and, and what Tom Brady said was kind of interesting. It's been quoted a lot of times. But Brady said this. There's times where I'm not the person that I want to be. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and still think there's something greater out there for me? I mean, maybe a lot of people would say, hey, man, this is, this is what it is. I reached my goal, my dream, my life. But me, I think it's got to be more than this. I mean, this can't be what it's all cracked up to be. I mean, I've done it. I'm 27. And what else is there for me. So Steve Croft said, so what's the answer? And Brady re replied, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I think, you know, talk about somebody who's made a ton of money, who's been incredibly successful, the best, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time, as much as I hate to say that out loud. Um, you know, he has done everything. And yet that feeling still exists, and I'm not putting him down for that because I think we all have that feeling of there's got to be more in this life than just this stuff. And so we seek. Matthew 13, 44 to 46 says this. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. There's one constant in life for all of us, and it's that we want more. And what Jesus tells us is the kingdom of God is like that treasure or that pearl that, that when we seek after it uh, and, and we find it, we need to... to to be willing to give up for it. That treasure that you sell everything you have to go and buy that land so you can have that treasure that you found. That pearl that, that is of such great value that you sell it all, that you get rid of everything in order to go and have it. Now, this is not Jesus advocating for liking stuff like pearls and treasures. This is Jesus using this as an, as a, an illustration for the kingdom of God, that, that life within the presence of Christ that is greater than any other thing that we can have. So seek after it. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be taken care of. Seek first the kingdom of, of God and all these things will be given to you. Don't worry about all that other stuff. Seek after the thing that matters. The presence of Christ in us. Today we're reminded that God is seeking after us. And that's important because I need to know that as that one sheep that sometimes gets lost, he cares enough about me, he cares enough about you to come after you with everything he has and rejoice in finding you. We need to recognize our value in God seeking after us. But also we need to recognize the value of God's kingdom and his presence and then in turn seek after him. Go and find him. There is more to this life. And he wants to, to show us that. 
but we got to be willing to seek. Let's pray.